I'm going to share another wonderful case that uh, Antonina Karmakova has kindly shared with me. Uh, I shan't uh, I shan't worry too much about clinical history because I, I don't have anything. But what I can glean from the section is yet again this is a piece of tissue from the back as determined by the great thickness of the of the reticular dermis. Now this is a melanocytic lesion and let's let's just take a moment to think of possible diagnoses at low power. Well there's clearly a, a component occupying the superficial dermis which looks pretty cellular at this magnification and then we have this extraordinary uh, dermal, deep dermal element where uh, the heavily pigmented cells are streaming down in narrow cords all the way down to and involving subcutaneous fat. So let's, um, let's just take a moment and, and think of possible differential diagnoses of this magnification. Um, I suppose the, the most obvious one, uh, which you'll all think of pretty quickly, is this is that this could be some form of melanoma. So melanoma is, num is number one in my mind, bec largely because of the this part up here. Secondly, could this be a combined nevus, some nevoid component here, and then perhaps a blue nevus, or Looking down there, you might even wonder about a cellular blue nevus component. Another option would be uh, uh, some sort of variation on the theme of deep penetrating nevus or plexiform spindle cell tumor described by Ray Barnhill, Marty Mimmons and others. Um, those would be the differentials that I would think of. Um, but number one, I think, uh, because the top, I think melanoma is probably going to be our, our um, most likely diagnosis. So let's have a look at the top. And we can clearly see there's a very cellular infiltrate in the superficial dermis. So we'll look at that more closely. And what do we see? Well, we can see a lot of junctional activity. There's a bit of artifact, uh, and so the cells are all separated from one another. Um, we can pick up here and there, over to this side, for example, we can see a bit of pagetoid spread. And here we can see, I think there's, a, there's effacement of the dermoepidermal junction. And at this magnification, the cells are obviously epithelioid and pretty large. So we'll increase magnification one bit more. And well, I, I don't think anyone's going to spend too much time wondering about what uh, this infiltrate. It's clearly a melanoma. There's the effacement uh, along the uh, dermoepidermal junction, there's some more pagetoid spread there and there. And within the dermis there are large nests. Um, as you can see, that there's a huge nest there. And then there are smaller nests and almost linear cords of cells. And we'll look at that a bit closer and see what's going on. Um, it's hard. It's hard to make out nuclear morphology. Uh, what what one can say is the nuclei appear hyperchromatic. They're rather uh, uh, pleomorphic. Uh, I'm not sure that I can see, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking for my toesies, to be honest with you, because. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether we can see them or not. I'm sure they're in there somewhere. Uh, there is a, um, 
a finely granular nature to the cytoplasm of the cells. This is due to very, very fine melanin uh, pigment granules, and it gives this rather dirty appearance, which is uh, very much something one sees in malignant uh, melanocytes rather than in benign lesions other than perhaps deep penetrating nevus can look can look a bit similar. Um, so there we have uh, an unarguably melanoma. I don't think anybody's going to question that. I'm just making sure there's nothing else that we can pick up that is of any great interest to us. I don't think so. I think that's as far as that's going to take us. There's a lymphocytic infiltrate along the bottom. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. If I go back to our times two, so the times two, there's our clear melanoma up there. And then we've got at the bottom of the reticular dermis, we've got an infiltrate there, which I think will turn out to be melanoma as well. And then we've got to work our way down to the bottom. So let's look at this bit here, um, just to see what's going on. And yes, there's, there is obviously melanoma in the deep reticular dermis, and there's masses of uh, pigment-laden melanophages um, Forming, forming, or in some places they are the predominant cell type, which is really quite interesting. Um, but having said that, uh, the, the what is relevant is there's more melanoma there, for example. Now let's uh, let's go back to the times two and see if we can't work out what's happening along these bits. Well, there's a nice field there, right? Just if we look there, you can see a, a an eccrine sweat duct ensheathed by melanophages. Perhaps there are tumor cells there as well, we'll see in a minute. The same thing for those two follicles. The, the, the papillary dermis around the hair follicle is stuffed full of pigment. And then on top of that, we can see that uh, the neurovascular bundles are, are surrounded by tumor cells. So I think, I think in a way, that this is a, you could best describe this as having a plexiform growth pattern. There, there's a lovely field there, and you can see there's a. Uh, a, a vessel and a nerve in sheathed by pigment-laden macrophages, which I think is telling us that there, there was or is tumor there there as well. Let's have it. See if we yes, you see that's all tumor there. That that there's the endothelial lining cells. So this is outside. So that's melanoma surrounding that vessel, and there's another vessel surrounded by pigment-laden macrophages and if we go across here we can see tumor has extended uh, the duct was somewhere up here and the, here we are now at the eccrine sweat gland around the eccrine coils and you can see melanophages all the way around it it's really quite striking how, how uh, how dense the melanin pigment is. There's another vessel totally surrounded by melanophages. Now I just want to have a look at the um, at the subcutaneous fat. That looks like it doesn't look as if we're going to pick up tumor in there. Although I'm sure there are some cells if one spend enough time. There's a nerve again in sheathed. And um, there is, yes, well, if we look down here, you see, that's right, that's right down to subcutaneous fat. And if we look in there, again, there are tumor cells. Uh, 
within the sub within the subcutaneous fat there, there's a nice nucleolus there another new there are two nuclei in that cell so this is uh, this is awfully unusual I think this is the best example I've, I've ever seen of what is sometimes called plexiform melanoma which uh, is basically a melanoma which confines its spread uh, along the the appendages and the neurovascular bundles in a way that's a bit reminiscent of a deep penetrating nevus growth pattern or the plexiform spindle cell nevus that Ray Barnhill described. This is this is perfect. Now I thought we might because there are a lot of bits of tissue. This is that that's the one we were looking at. So let's there's a that that might be quite interesting there. See if we can pick up an, oh wow, look at that. I'll just turn it round and uh, it's really the deep bit that's so striking. Just isn't that isn't that just just beyond belief the density of the of the melanophage is going down. I'm not sure what all this is. Is it is it some form of fat necrosis? Let's have, let's have a look a bit closer. Gosh, it's connective tissue. Uh, it's very strange. I, I I'm not sure what to make of that, but it certainly sticks out like a sore thumb. And if we plot around. Um, well, I don't know what's going on there. Let, let me go back to our lower power and see. I'm sure there's tumour in here, but it, if there is, it's jolly hard to, to make out. We'll go down to times five. No, we'll go down to times two. There was another bit, I think, that had... Uh, well, I don't suppose it really offers you anything more than what we've already seen. So the point is all of these all of these little bits of tumor are following neurovascular bundles and when you get them cut cut in this plane of section that 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 becomes really obvious. Uh, they're just following the blood vessels deeply down into into fat. So I don't think I can offer anything more. Um, I think this is just a truly remarkable case, and I'm very grateful to Antonina for letting me see it and letting me share it with all of you guys. So if you haven't seen a plexiform melanoma before, well, you've seen one now, and I hope, uh, I hope you, you've enjoyed it. And um, thank you very much for spending the time with me to look at it.